Hello everyone, Gigaraptor here with a video I promised in the last one. So, I believe I mentioned about my project I was working on. This is it. It's called Cold War, Cold War Conflicts, as you can probably see like, up here. And basically what it is, is it's a um, strategy game with a activity element. So, how it actually works when you actually install it, is that you've got two windows. You've got your you've got like the actual simulation window with the pictures and stuff and probably down here for you or up here is a console window and it shows you information on the battlefield so let's get started you can make all kinds of different levels with this so if you wanted to you can completely strip out one of these and write your own so I'll show that in like a document I'll upload later on but yeah so basically the the graphical screen is used for a graphical a graphical representation of the battlefield. So blue are anti-communist forces in this case because it's Cold War Vietnam. So and the other side are the communist forces, of course. So to move things, you click a unit, as we can see up here. It's been selected, and we move back dependent on the movement values. Now these are all defined in the data files and you can look through them yourself and you can shoot them as well so like that each unit can only move and shoot once so we're going to go through all of these uh, so we've already killed one there um, go through and shoot them all um, there we go so in the actual thing there is a bunch of um there's some music and some sound as well so it's not completely like silent like it is here it's just I muted it because you know um, that was just the quote flashing up so how this was originally designed was as a system for teaching students how to well, basic history so GCSEs in this country and basically what it does is it will show a quote from say a newspaper for instance and it will have a little bit of interpretation beneath it, so it will say, oh, this shows a Whig view of history, for instance. Um, and that was just one of the example ones to test that I was working, that it was working. So now we're on the American turn, now we've changed turns, so we can select this. There are various types of units in this as well, of course, as you can see. So these are infantry. These are the only form of unit that can be attacked without anti-personnel weapons. Um... Uh, yeah, so they they tend to be quite well. They tend to be quite plentiful in the scenarios, but like to, honestly, you write the scenarios in JSON, so you can just do that yourself. And um, yeah, so um, there's other types of units as well. You've got mechanized, which are like light vehicles. They'll be affected by terrain, um, and they have they're basically generally used for like light vehicles and things like that. As a means of showing, this is all defined in like things. Then you've got emplacements, which are static units which don't move but are generally quite powerful. So I think this is a um, yeah eighty-two millimeter mortar. The other one down there was a machine gun. We'll go on. Um, recon, which are generally fast units that are quite weak. They don't really have much of a use in this version of the game. Um. There's, did I say tanks? Yeah, I said tanks, I think. Tanks are basically what you think they are. Uh, they shoot things and they kill things. Then you've got helicopters, which are quick and quite powerful. Artillery, which is like insane, but generally can't move. So I have a bunch of um, different different kinds. So there's like, I think there's, this is the duster. Yeah, so that's an example of a mechanized. That's a cobra, I believe. Yeah. These are BRDM recon vehicles. Oh, I'm playing there. <laughs> uh, yeah, the UI isn't very good, but you know, I never was a drawer. So, essentially, how combat is computed is that it will take a unit. So let's let's choose this infantry, for instance. We'll move it forward just to be clear. So you have two sides in each firefight. You have a shooting side and a receiving side. Uh, the shooting side obviously fires first. So what it does is it uses the A-star algorithm built into this to 
trace a path, the shortest path to the other unit, and then if it's within range um, of the of the required um, type, because there's two types, of course, like I said, there's anti-personnel, and then there's anti-tank, which is for taking out anything that isn't infantry. If it's in that range, then it'll work. And from there, it rolls dice, the amount of time specified in the data file for how many shots I've got. So, for instance, this here might have... I think it's four, um, but either way, like they lost, and it will shoot them. It will take into account to hit, which is four plus every every time, so like four or five or six. Then there's saves, which are dependent on things in data files, and then last of all, if a unit is in a a jungle, which is like one of these, or in a village, which is one of these, it will have a cover save as well. Which is generally five plus, I think. So basically, when that's done, it will look at this combat resolution. So, so you might notice have noticed in the console, although I wasn't looking, things like getting impetuous and things, and this generally mean this generally like influences other morale. There's also panic states and um, oh, that's weird. Um, <laughs> There, it's quite buggy. Um, there's panicked, which stops the unit shooting and moving. There's stunned, which stops the unit shooting and moving, but is a bit more, you know, meaty than that. Then there's pinned, which stops the unit moving for a turn. There's route. Oh, I've already moved that, haven't I? I'm a retard. Um, and then there's route, which basically make, makes the unit, whenever you select to move it, move to the bottom right. Um, what else is stuck, which is dependent on like being not infantry and being in heavy, bad, butt shit terrain. And in that case, it will um, decrease the movement by a third, so you can't move quite as well, provided you've shot, you know. Yeah, that's another one destroyed. Um, what else? There was, I think there's another one. Um, no, I don't think there was another one actually. But there's basically a bunch of morale conditions and all of that. So obviously this is really, really, really early. Very, very early. This is like the first thing I'm actually willing to show to the public, and it's taking me about well, about two weeks of spare time to do this. It's all in um, it's ba it's C. All of it's written in C. Um. Source code will be available at some time, but not right now, because I'm still working on it a bit. And, uh, no, no, has it killed it yet? Jeez. Um, yeah, so it's written in C. The backup libraries are um, SDL. Oh, wait, of course I switched sides, didn't I? Yeah, there we go. Um, libraries are SDL2, SDL2 TTF, which is true type font. Um, SDL2 mixer there we go um, what else was there there was um, I think there was another one I think it was, might have been it was one of the SDL ones oh I know it was for OG it was OG files yeah so you can see with the you can see with inside of the folder like all of the different DLLs. <clears throat> There's of course Janssen, which is the backup, which is the library used for um for JSON. And that's pretty much it. Oh wait, there's Windows, the Windows library, so because I had to move the console to the right hand top right hand corner so it's easier to look at. I had to ended up having to use a lot of the Windows libraries. Oh, not keeping track of what turn it is. Um, I keep no. I have to keep clicking into the console and pressing enter. So because like I couldn't find a decent way of doing this because it was a lot of a lot of cut corners and things like that. So because I had very little time and I spent a lot of the time writing other code for like for instance. 
there's in the software there is um what's that say? Yeah, um there is a means by which it's loaded which is a bit weird. Oh wait, I'll I'll wait until I'll end the turn in a minute but it ends the scenario when you've run out of units. I'll just explain what this is. So basically it works like a database where you've got numbers that define IDs and things like that. And I wrote the system from the ground up so that it loads based on IDs and not based on your your file path. Although the file path still exists for some things, but I redefine them as numbers because numbers are easier to remember. Remember, and it gives the illusion of kind of being database. Sorry, guys. I think I think we already know that already, though. Uh, this is the quiz bit. So basically, you, it gives you a selection of different questions to go through based on what you've learned in the sim the simulation bit. It will ask five of them in this particular scenario because that's basically what I've told it to do, and that's all defined in data files as well. However, it does repeat them. So, yeah, and then when it's done, it computes a grade, and then it's the end. So, bye. Because it, it tends to crash, so because of like I put the get trial on that, so yeah. This was this was it. So. Thanks for watching. Uh, tell me what you think of it. It's probably pretty terrible. I know it looks bloody awful, but you know I was never was an artist, and I was more focused on other things when I was writing this. So yeah, not designed for <laughs> for being. It's not the greatest game in the world. So like, subscribe, and all of that. Doing more politics videos and doing more tutorials later on. In the oh wait oh so it doesn't show up. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, doing more tutorials and doing more politics videos soon enough. So thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.